Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Chester and I were 30 miles from Dodge when we ran into the Buffalo Hunters camp. We'd been holed up for two days in a deserted sod hut taking cover from one of the worst blizzards in years. But it was over now and a warm, dry Chinook blew out of the west, down off the Rockies and across the prairie into Kansas. It was Chester who first saw the camp. A pile of buffalo hides, half covered with snow, and the skeleton of a wagon its canvas torn and shredded by the blizzard. The camp was silent as we rode up and got down. Ain't there a soul here, Mr. Dillon? Maybe they got caught out on the prairie when the blizzard hit, Chester. Yeah, it sure does look that way. I don't know how that team is still alive with nothing but that wagon for protection. Yeah, but they don't look none too lively. Yeah, you can't blame them. Mm-hmm. Put your hands up. Look. Close it, Close Better do what the old man says, Chester. You must have been hiding in that wagon. Come over here. Closer. This your camp, mister? Of course it's my camp. Now you two drop them guns. Well, we got our hands up, is not enough. You do what I say. I ain't taking no chances. I ain't going to get left here again. What? You're going to hitch up that team and you're going to take me in the dog. You ain't running off like Jed Larner. Well, who's Jed Larner? He was my skinner. Well, why did he leave you? Yeah, he seen that blizzard coming. He didn't want to take any chances, so he rode off. He's probably been in Dodge all the time, warm and cozy. Well, why didn't you go with him? Well, I twisted my leg, my foot, so I can't ride a horse, that's why. And Larner figured driving the wagon would be too slow. You mean he left you here to freeze? Uh, I'll kill him when I find him. And I'll kill you if you don't drive me to Dodge. Now, here. He's a U.S. Marshal, mister. He ain't gonna leave you here. The Marshal? Now, why don't you put that rifle down and tell us who you are? All right. My name's Ira Puckett, Marshal. I'm usually up north following the Republican herd, but I come south this year. I'm getting old, and I thought it'd be warmer down here. You sure made a mistake about that, didn't you? You'll get me in the Dodge, won't you? Yeah, sure, of course we will. Uh, that foot's a twisted. I don't feel nothing in it. It must be froze. Yeah, it could be. I'll kill Jed Larner for this. Now, you forgot about that, Puckett. I'm not taking you back to Dodge just so you can hang. Uh, I'll forget it. Till I find him. Put left when I got through with him. Oh. You'll be able to walk, sir. 
With the king? Well, these buffalo hunting days are over. Uh-huh. Does, uh... Does he know that? I told him. I'll have puck at the proud man, man. A little too proud. Oh, what do you mean, Doc? Well, what he hated most about this dead lion and leaving him on the prairie wasn't the fact that he might have died, but that he was helpless. Now, a man like Puckett can't stand being helpless. I see. And now, all crippled up, he, he's a bitter man, Matt. Well, he got over it, Doc. You know, Mac, I got used to most anything in time. No, 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 I got my doubts about Puckett. Hey, he's in the back room, right? You want to see him? Yeah, all right. Well, come on. Hello, Puckett. Why, sir? Well, how you feeling? Yes. Did I tell you what he done to me? Yeah. He ruined my foot. I saved your life, Puckett. And I ain't sure I'm grateful, Doc. Uh, you're gonna be all right, Puckett. You'll be able to get around. Yeah, like old woman. What am I gonna do for a living? I ain't one of you city people. I live off the country. I always have. I'm a man, not a dude. Uh, you'll get used to town life. And, uh, besides, you'll find men here, too. Yeah, what kind of men? Walking around all flickered up, parting their hair in the middle and bowing to the ladies. Ain't one of them could do half the things I've done. Well, I was living with Comanches when most of them were sniveling in their mother's apron. Yeah, I know. But you'll find something to do. I'll help you. You will, huh? Sure. And help me find Jed Larner. Bring him in here so that I can kill him with my bare hands. What does he look like, Parker? No, oh, he's tall, black hair. Got a big scar running across one eye and halfway down his right cheek. Oh, good. I'll try to find him. And if I do, I'll run him out of town before you get to him. Yeah. I can't even trust you, can I? Not when you want to murder a man. I told you I didn't bring you in so that you could hang. <laughs> The next few weeks, I kept a sharp eye out for Jed Larner, but uh, he must have headed for some other part of the country anyway. He never showed up in Dodge. That time passed, and Ira Puckett was able to get around a little bit. First with the help of clutches, and then finally with a cane. But it was obvious that uh, his hunting days were over. And that alone seemed to shame him. And then one night, his pride really got a blow. I was at the Long Branch having a beer with Kitty when it happened. Oh, this is a great way to start the new year, Matt. Oh, what do you mean, Kitty? Well, all well, last year, I was hoping maybe I'd be in San Francisco by now. San Francisco? Yeah. You never told me. Oh. What would you have done about it? Um, nothing, I guess. But, uh... Why San Francisco? No blizzard, no dust, no cowboy. Yeah, but they got fog. And all those sailors and miners aren't any more gentle than these cowboys, you know. Yeah, I know. Imagine going to dinner in a carriage, eating off a tablecloth, dancing on a hardwood floor. <laughs> you know, I think you're spoiled, Kitty. Uh, how could I get spoiled? Here in Dodge City? You know, I always... What's the matter, man? That man at the bar there, he just turned around. Hmm? Which man? One with a scar down his cheek. Oh. Excuse me, Kitty, I'll be back. No. <laughs> oh. Evening, Marshal. Evening. Before you staring at me, Marshal. Your name's Ted Lerner. So what if it is? How long you been in town? About an hour. Marshal, something wrong? You remember the big blizzard we had? Whoa, who don't? We all do, I guess. Especially Ira Puckett. What? He didn't die, Lerner. Well, that's fine. 
I went back looking for him. I wondered where he got to. Yeah, I couldn't sure you did. Well, it's true. Bucket's here in Dodge, Lenny. He is? And if he finds you, he'll kill you. But he isn't going to find you because you're leaving right now. And don't you ever show up around here again. Well, well now, just wait, Marshal. I can't arrest you, and I can't put you in jail, but I'll tell you what I can do. What? Suppose I just let everybody here know that you're the man who ran off and left Ira Puckett to die. Oh, no. You know, they tear you apart, Lunner. Don't say nothing, Marshal. They'd set you on fire. Don't tell them. I- I'll leave, Marshal. I- I- I'm leaving right now. Well, you got rid of him in a hurry. Well, I just saved him from being shot. And I had a bucket for him hanging for it, did he? Oh, that was Jed Long, maybe. Uh-huh. He's the one that ought to hang. Ah, he didn't mean to kill the old man, did he? What's the difference? Well, legally it is, Tom, I guess. Enough to give Ira his foot back? Yeah, it's sure hard to argue with, aren't you? Why? Because I think so. Why don't we talk about San Francisco some more? Hmm, I changed my mind. I think I'll go to New York. Marshal Dillon? It's out of pocket now. Yeah. He looks awful mad. He can hear not. You can always find a gun, Kitty. You done it. You done it, Marshal. It was you, wasn't it? Uh, you saw Jed Lerner. Yes, I saw him. Saw him jump on his horse. He rode out of town before I could stop him. And I had to stand there and watch. I didn't even have a rock to throw at him. Why'd you do it, Marshal? I'll tell you why I did it. I wanted to save you from hanging. Uh, I'd rather hang than live this way. I wasn't born to become a helpless old man. And the least you could have done would be to let me fight my own battles like I always did on the plane. You, you took my manhood away from me, Marshal. You're living in a town now, Ira, among people. Why don't you try to get used to it? All right. All right, I will. I'll start living like you town people. And you're going to get a job? I'm going to. I sure am. And it's going to pay me a lot of money, too. Now, what do you mean? you find out, Marshal, when it's too late. <laughs> But ain't it a nice morning, Mr. Jones? Yeah, thanks to that wind we had last night. Well, it kept me awake. Oh? Uh, all night? Well, mister, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say all night. It, it. Hey, look, it's over there by the bank, Mr. Jones. Ain't that a lie to it? Huh? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the first time he's had his team and wagon on. He suppose he's gone. Right now, he's going into the bank. Mm, what's he carrying that shotgun for? <laughs> he can't go hunting in the bank. Oh, yes, he can, Chester. Come on. Well, Mr. Jim, you don't even say a little puck is going to fool that bank up. Well, he said last night he's going to start living like town people. Get a job and make himself a lot of money. Well, this could be his idea of how to do it. Mm, he sure couldn't have no other he carry that shotgun in there, could he? Here. You, you going in after him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Yeah, but he's got a shotgun. Just there, look. You take his wagon and team off somewhere. Lead him out around the back of the bank, out of sight. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can handle this without a shooting. Go on. All right, sir. Go on. All right, Chester. He's coming out. Come on out, Bucket. Marshal. I'm not stopping you. You'd better not try it. I can shoot with one hand, Marshal. Sure. You don't you try to follow me, neither. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. 
Where's my wagon? Where's my team? You're in a bad fix, aren't you? Somebody stole them. I can't get away without my team. No, you can't, Target. So you might as well give up. You done it. You're behind this, Marshal. You gonna shoot me? Why shouldn't I? Because you're in enough trouble already, and shooting me won't help a bit. You're trapped, and there isn't a thing you can do about it. Now, why don't you use your head, Darrell? All right. Here. There's the money. Now, you bring my outfit back. I ain't going to go to jail, Marshal. Like I said, shooting me isn't going to help you. And I'm not going to do a thing about your outfit. You think you've outsmarted me, don't you? Give it up, Arlo. You're licked. Yeah, I... I... Oh, I, I, I can't shoot you, Marshal. Here, here, take the gun. Max, you're a helpless old fool. Can't even rob a bank proper. I'm not sure that you really wanted to, I don't... What? All you wanted was to prove something about that manhood you think has been taken away from you. And that you sure picked a foolish way to do it. Yeah, I guess I did. I thought he wouldn't never give up, Mr. Young. He didn't have much choice, Mr. Only take him on over to jail. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I can't stand jail. Please, Marshal. Yeah, I'll lock him up, Chester, and I'll return this money. I have a talk with Mr. Bodkin. I'll be over later. <laughs> you to lock him up, Chester. Well, I started to his you know, but my, I, I just couldn't stand the look on his face when I locked him in that cell. You know, Ira, it seems to me that everybody treats you pretty well. Yeah, everybody but Jed Lerner. Yeah, that's true, but Chester and I brought you in. Doc saved your life. I kept you from hanging, and if I hadn't outsmarted you at the bank, you'd probably be lying dead somewhere right now. You know, it seems to me everybody's gone to an awful lot of trouble for an old man full of a lot of foolish pride. What do you think? I've been thinking, Marshal. Stepping here thinking. You know what? You're right. It's too late now. No, it isn't. What? I explained everything to Mr. Bodkin at the bank, and he's willing to drop any charges against you. But on one condition. What's that? Well, to be honest with you, it was my idea that Mr. Bodkin agreed. You got a job here, and you quit being so doggone ornery, huh? Otherwise, you'll go to jail. Uh, what can I do with this crippled foot? Well, seeing that you're so handy with a shotgun, I think that Jim Buck might hire you to ride messenger on the stage for him. You think so? Well, he told me he would. You went and saw him? And it doesn't take any walking, Ira. How about it? I, I never had a job like that. But a man's got to make a change once in a while, don't he? And it'll sure be a good way to start the new year. and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.